All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor to Take your album by Hashem, your album shy by Hashem, a Kakadash, and the Heavenly Father, true name is Zayah Howell, and the Son begotten Son by Hashem, in the name of Mashiach, your album shy. Those are their true names, the ancient Paleo Hebrew, the last one, the last old tongue. And much love and respect to the uh, elders while I can, while I can walk once more. So, out here again on this uh, Tuesday afternoon, uh, March the uh, 12th, 2024, in downtown Chicago, uh, the chief place of concourse, and looking up the names of the Hawaii Al Shah. And the Wadi Hab Ashmi Al Shah for giving us the opportunity and chance to come out here once more and lift another names of the Hawaii Al Shah. Much love and respect to the uh, elders while I can walk. This is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. It says, A time for everything. It says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Right, but there is a time to season and every purpose under heaven, and that's what we see in the modern day times. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 2. And they time to be born, and they time to D.I.E., and they time to plant, and they time to pluck up that witch's plant. Ecclesiastes plus 3 and verse 3. And they time to K.I.L.L., and they time to heal, and they time to break down, and they time to build up. Verse 4. And they time to weep, and they time to laugh, and they time to mourn, and they time to dance. Verse 5. And they time to cast away stones, and they time to gather stones together. And they time to embrace, and they time to pray from the person. Verse 6. And they time to get, and they time to lose, and they time to keep, and they time to pass away. Verse 7, and they time to rain, and they time to sow, and they time to keep silent, and they time to speak. Right, so we are in the time of speaking of prophecies and increasing biblical signs. As us being the servants and prophets of Yahweh, Hashem, 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 in a time of war, in a time of peace. So that shows you that the Heavenly Father is a righteous man of power. And this is taking place in modern day times, just like it was in ancient times. This is a prophet Jeremiah. Yep, this is a prophet Jeremiah 28, verse 8. It says, The prophets that happened before thee, before thee, all, both, right, both, uh, it says the prophets that happened before thee and be, and before the old prophet old prophesied both against many countries and great kings of war, evil, and a pestilence. Right? And that's what's taking place. Wars, evils, and a pestilence. And it's only going to continue to increase. And that's what the prophet of Zoe was doing. And now we're doing that in modern day times. Prophesying against great countries and great kings of war, evil, and a pestilence. You know, prophesying against these uh, modern day countries and kingdoms of war, evil, and a pestilence in modern day times. So it's only going to increase. So the wars, evils, and the pestilence that we see in the world today, it's only going to expand. It's only going to increase more and more and more as the more we continue to prophesy about it, you know. As us being the servants and prophets of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahshua, us this way, you know. This is uh, the prophet Ezekiel. Salakia. Yeah, this is uh, the prophet Ezekiel 30. Right, it says uh, from the Blue Letter Bible, it says prophecies about God in a future invasion of Israel. Right, prophecies about God, which is the Russians of God and Roman Magog, which represents the bear in the fusion invasion of Israel as well, too. This is uh, the prophet Ezekiel 38, verse 1. And the word of the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, came unto me, saying, Ezekiel 38, verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against God and Roman Magog. And the chief priest of Meshach and Tubal still to this day. It's like it was ancient times, and I'm seeing that modern day times. Ezekiel 38, verse 3. It says, Thus said the Lord, your house thy power, and behold, I am against thee, O God. And the chief priest of Meshach and Tubal, uh, verse 4. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth with all thy armies, horse and horsemen, all of them cloak with all sorts of armor, even a great company of buckle and shoes, and I'll have the swords. Right, so the heavenly fathers put the hooks and back into the jaws of these uh, Russians. Right, with a great company of buckles, armors, and all of them having swords. You know? And that's what we are seeing. And it's being played out as we speak, you know, by the heavenly father, Yahweh. Because he's a man of war, Exodus 15 and 3. So the heavenly father, he orchestrated all of, it, all of this, you know. Just like he orchestrated the things in ancient times, and I ain't saying he orchestrated this in modern times. You know? This is uh, Ezekiel 38, verse 5. Persia, which is uh, Iran, of Elon, Ethiopia, the Cushites, and Libya, the Ishmaelites, with all of them with shield and hammer, right? With all of them fully equipped with shield, armor, and 
him. Verse 6, Ezekiel 38, verse 6, Gomer was the modern day Turks. As we continue to see, the escalations are heating up still to this day over in Iraq and Syria between the Turks' armies and the Kurds' their armies. It says, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tokemore of the North Quarters, and all his bands and many people with thee. Ezekiel 38, verse 7, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself and all thy companies that are assembled unto thee. Be thou a guard unto them. Right, so Russia is definitely going to be a guard unto these nations. I pray in Ethiopia, Libya, and Turkey. That's why we're seeing so much escalations are heating up over in Western Asia, while the Russian prayer situation is heating up as well, too. And I believe there was an article that just came out as well, too. I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, I believe it was from the Jerusalem Post, if I'm not mistaken. Or the news now, the news now feed that I'll be going to, looking at the news feeds, and sometimes they help me out do sit down lessons on that as well too. And then they had a uh, military exercise drills from Belarus. And keep this in mind, as of last year, you had uh, Russia recently deployed uh, nuclear weapons, and so has been deployed over there in Belarus as well too, because you got Russia and Belarus is uh, continually increasing allies with one another. Just like the president of uh, Belarus and the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, you know, because they, uh, especially you have the uh, NATO versus uh, Russia, those tensions are been escalating throughout the years and as of recently as well, too. So that's only going to increase. That's why we see in Ezekiel, the 38th chapter is being played out, you know, as what I was saying was, um, yeah, what I was saying was you had uh, Russia. Uh, I mean, Belarus recently just uh, did a military exercise drills to have that pre preparation for war, just in case they uh, potentially might go to war, uh, get involved with the Ukraine war, and potentially get involved with uh, the tensions Russia has with NATO. That's why we're seeing the Ezekiel 38 chapters being played out. While we're seeing the Russia-Ukraine situation is heating up, and we're seeing what's taking place over there in uh, Western Asia, you know, especially over there in Syria. Because you had Russia recently, I would say like two months ago, recently deployed reinforces over there in Syria. And then they just, like, I say, like last week, because I remember I did a sit down lesson on it. Because, you know, you didn't have, you dealing with those, Russia is dealing with those uh, uh, army, army uh, factors over there in that area ever since 2015. And ever since now, you know, because you got Russia and Belarus as allies with one another. And not too long ago, they recently uh, accused. Uh, the Israeli Defense Force, the war crimes. So, hey, that shows you that the secret of 38 chapter is, uh, is in full effect as we speak, you know. And this is what we are out here speaking about, prophesying against great countries and great kings of war, equal and pestilence. Especially the categories of the wars, it's only going to expand, it's only going to increase. There's might be times it might cool down a little bit, but the Heavenly Father is going to escalate it right back up. That has he been doing, you know, back and forth, because the Heavenly Father, he's a uh, righteous balanced power, because He's in control of everything. This is uh, Ezekiel 38, verse 5. It says, Persia, which is uh, Iran, Ethiopia, which is the Cushites, and Libya, all of them were shielded in him. That's why you see an increasing cross border conflict between Iran and uh, Israel. You, know? you see, an escalations are heating up throughout the uh, continent of Africa. Uh, Ethiopia, Somalia, them and all that they have escalations with the United States and stuff like that uh, against each other. So we see we see in different parts of wars and escalations and commotions throughout the whole throughout that continent of Africa, throughout Western Asia, and throughout the Russia Ukraine situation, and throughout the whole world. So it's only going to increase. You know? This is uh, Ezekiel thirty-eight verse six. I'm gonna read it again. Gomer was the modern day Turks, and all uh, it says in the house of Togomor, the north north quarters. And all his bands and many people with me. Ezekiel 38, verse 7, it says, Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself and all thy companies that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Right, so Russia is going to be a guard unto these nations Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, Turkey. You know? uh, verse 39, it says, Prophecies against God and then invaders, the invaders destroyed. Ezekiel 39 and verse 1, Therefore thou son of man, prophesy against God. And say, Lord, say the Lord, you have thy power. Behold, I am against thee, O God, and the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Right, so the heavenly father is against the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And he put the spirit on us to prophesy against uh, God, and the big of the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And it's like the world's amazing times. Now we see that in my good times. Ezekiel 39 and verse 2, And I will turn thee back. It says, and I will turn thee back and leave for the sixth part of the 
caused me to come up to both parts, and I will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. Ezekiel 39 and verse 3, it says, And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and cause thy arrows to come out of thy right hand. Uh, and this is uh, Isaiah, prophet Isaiah 17 and verse 1, prophecy about Damascus. It says, The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be as it was. It shall be as it was. Right, that's what we see. Russia, I mean, um, Damascus is taken away from it being a, a city. It should be as a ruin. Especially, you got the uh, Russia and Syria going against those forces over there throughout that whole region of Syria. Then you got the uh, clashes between Syria uh, versus uh, IDF, which is the Israel Defense Force. And then you got the uh, coalition forces with the Iranian back and the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps going against the Israel Defense Force, and you have the IDF continue to use uh, rockets and firepower and targeting those facilities over there in Damascus. That's why we see seeing Damascus is taking away from being a city, should be as a world heat. You know? This is uh, the prophet Jeremiah 51 and verse 46 to lock in. This is uh, Jeremiah 51 and verse 46, and it reads, it says, at least your heart faint, to lock in my apologies. Jeremiah 51 and verse 46, it says, uh, at least your heart faint, ye fear for a rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall come one year, and after that another year shall come a rumor and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Right, that's what we're seeing. So uh, continuing on to go to Joel, the third chapter. This is uh, Joel chapter, the nations will be judged. And that's what I like in uh, Joel, the third chapter. This is uh, the prophet Joel, chapter 3, verse 1. And this is from the Blue, Blue Letter Bible, KJB 611 uh, Bible. Joel, chapter 3, verse 1. But behold, in those days and in that time, I will bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Right? We are Judah and Jerusalem, the Israelites. Uh, Joel 3, verse 2. And I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is your house of over there in Western Asia. And I will plead with them for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Whom they have scattered among the nations and part of the land. All right, so these nations have the part of the Lord's land still to this day. That's why the scripture says uh, Jerusalem should be tried down until the Gentiles be fulfilled. You know, reference that scripture. Uh, Joel 3 and verse 3. And they have cast lot for my people, for right, the children of Israel. And they have given them a boy fair part of and so they grew up in wine that they might drink. It. Joel 3 and verse 4. Right, trade with mustard and wine. The transatlantic slave trade, the Southern Heavy slave trade, this modern day servitude, this modern day slavery that's been taking place as of recently. So, hey, there's no new thing under the sun, and the Heavenly Father required that which is past. Hey, so he's the ancient days, he still remains the same, he doesn't change. So, that recompense has definitely come upon these uh, other nations, you know, what they did to the children of Israel. This is, uh, even though we jack each other up and uh, jacking the other nations up, but the Heavenly Father hasn't forgot about it. What they did to his people. They had the heavenly father cast away his people, yeah, how will be it, you know? Joel 3 and verse 4. Yea, what have ye to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? Right, those Hamanic nations, and all the coast of Palestine, watch the Philistines, the Ishmaelites. It says, Will you render me a recompense? And it recompense me swiftly and speedily, question mark. It says, and if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, and I return your recompense upon your own head. Right, so the Heavenly Father is going to return that recompense upon your own head, these other nations, you know. This is uh, Joel 3 and verse, right, Joel 3 and verse 5, I'm going to read it again. It says, because you have taken my silver and my gold and carried them into your temple, my good and precious things, right, the Israelites, the apple of the Lord's eye. Joel 3 and verse 6. It says, the children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem had ye sold unto the Grecians, right, the Edomites, that you might remove them far from their border. Right, because the Israelites have been removed far from their border still to this day. From their ancestors, from our ancestors and forefathers, and all went to us in these modern day times. Joel 3 and verse 7, it says, Behold, I will raise them up at a place where you have sold them, and I will turn your recompense upon your own head. Right, so that recompense is definitely coming upon their own head. And that's going to be times double what they did to the children of Israel, Judah, and Jerusalem. Because the scripture says, yet this day we're still in the land of our captivity, that we, what we've been scattered at, you know, speaking these different languages. 
these are the customs and cultures. Joel 3 and verse 8, it says, And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah. Right? Just like just like our ancestors and forefathers were sold by their ancestors and forefathers. That's going to come back towards them times. No. It says, And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah. Right? This is Joel 3 and verse 8. And they shall sell them to the Severians. Right? Those people over there in Yemen, modern day Yemenis. To the people far off from the Lord, Yahweh died, power has spoken. Uh, verse 9, Joel 3 and verse 9, it says, Proclaim ye this amongst the Gentiles, which is the other nations. It says, Prepare war, wake up the mighty man, let all the men of war draw near, and let them come up. Right over there in uh, Western Asia, Valley Charles effect. Joel 3 and verse 10, it says, Beat your plowshares and the swords and the plenty hooks into spears, and let the weak say, I am strong. Right, that's what we're seeing. And we're seeing coalition forces, <laughs> uh, uh, allies with one another, financial allies, uh, military cooperation allies, building up their nuclear capability, sharing nuclear capability, you know, expanding nuclear capability with one another. Now we're starting to see, let the weak say, I'm strong. As we've been seeing the uh, uh, military uh, trainings and military drills been expanding, been increasing in these modern day times. You know, military spending, military funding, ever since World War II, ever since the Cold War. And that's what we're seeing, you know. Nuclear escalations and tensions that we're seeing increasing and expanding in these modern day times. So it's only going to increase. But we are in those times, you know. Joel 3 and verse 10. Yeah, this is uh, Joel 3 and verse 10. It says, Beat your plowshares and the swords and the bloody hooks and the spears, and let the weak say I am strong. Right, that's what we're seeing. That the that the, uh, that the uh, nations that used to be weak, and now we're starting to see that them say I'm strong. Joel three and verse eleven: Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, which is the armies of the other nations, and gather yourselves together round about thither to cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. Joel three and verse twelve: Let the heathen be awakening and come up into the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is Yahweh Shabbat. Uh, for there I will sit and judge all the heathen round about, right? That's what the Heavenly Father is going to do as he continues uh, to gather the nations over there, increasingly more and more and more. Uh, putting that warlike mindset and uh, waking up the mighty men of the armies of these nations so they can get closer and closer to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And that's what we're seeing. Uh, Joel 3 and verse 12, it says, Let the heathen be awakened and come up into the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is a house of pot. And there I will sit and judge all the heathen round about. Joel 3 verse 13. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come ye ye down, for the crust is full, and the fast overflow, for the wickedness is great. Uh, Joel 3 verse 13. Multitudes and multitudes in the valley of the sea, for the day of the Lord, the hour is near, and the valley of the sea. 144 called the Lord Yahweh Shemel Shaq. Joel 3 verse 14. It says, Multitudes and multitudes in the valley of the sea. For the day of the boy Yahweh thy power is near in the valley of the city. Right, so the day of the boy Yahweh Shemashah is near in the valley of the city. We see that increasing. You know? This is what we're out here prophesying about. Prophesying against great countries and great kings of war, evil, and pestilence. As we're getting closer and closer to the valley of the host of it, Armageddon, all the gone one. You know, a second world pass, we go with third world coming quickly. We're entering in those times in modern day times, you know. Make sure everything good. Why do you have Ashram Yasha? So it's a lock here for that. <coughs> now, if we switch up the spirit, get into the. Uh... <coughs> 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 Second Chronicles 70 verse 14. Switch up the topic. It says, If my people, which is all the Israelites, all by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and will hear their land. Right, so once we turn back to the Habash and Asha, you know, and turn from our evil and wicked ways, then he will hear us and will heal our land. You know? Uh, the prophet Isaiah. Uh, this is, yeah, this is the prophet Isaiah 55 verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord Yahweh while he may be found. Call upon him while he is there. Alright, so we gotta see we gotta see the ways of the heavenly father. Now so more than ever. 
before we enter into these uh, various, you know, before we get into these uh, various serious times. You know. Kind of windy out here, so lock here. Hey, prophesy, hey, prophesy onto the wind. Body of Bashmel Shah. Uh, this is the book of Isaiah 55 and verse 6. It says, Seeking the Lord, Yahweh, why he may be found, call upon him while he is near. All right, so we got to seek the words of Yahweh, Bashmel Shah, call upon him while he is near. Especially uh, about the times that we're about to enter into, you know, you know, the time of Jacob's struggle, uh, our temptation, the great tribulation, the great insurrection. And these are the times we're about to enter into. Uh, World War Three, on the hit, you know. Uh, Isaiah 55, hey, the pushing of this RFID, Karagna. So, hey, we got to seek the Heavenly Father now more so than ever. We return back to the, the ways of righteousness and return back to being this one. You know? We're about to enter into some very serious times as we see it in approaching more and more. Uh, Isaiah 55, verse 7, it says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord Yahweh thy power, and he will have mercy on, upon him. And our God, your house by power, or he will abundantly part. Right? So once we turn from our evilness and wickedness, once we acknowledge that we've been doing continuously wrong in the heavenly father, just like it was in ancient times, now in modern day times, once we acknowledge those things and return back to the ways of righteousness, and out of our rocks, uh, may the heavenly father abundantly apart us from our evilness and wickedness. Now we've been continually doing the inside. Prophet Isaiah 55 verse 8. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways are my ways, see the Lord and how So our thoughts are not the thoughts of Heavenly Father. So the thoughts of Heavenly Father is way higher than our thoughts. That's why we trust in His ways, because the ways of the Heavenly Father is His pure righteousness. This is uh, Isaiah 55 and verse 9. It said, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55 and verse 10, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven and would turn it not thither but water the earth and make it it says and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the shower and bread to the eater isaiah 55 and verse 11 so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth and it shall not return unto my void but it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper into the things what unto i sent it Rise to the, the words of the Heavenly Father doesn't go on void, and it goes forward, and then accomplish that which pleases Him. It's easy control of everything. That's why we, uh, as Israelites, we trust the ways of the Heavenly Father out as being His servants and prophets, and us being the sons and daughters of two living power. You know, trusting the ways of righteousness and turn it, and try our best to the best of our ability and turn away from evilness and wickedness. You know? And this is uh, the prophet Isaiah, uh, 33 and verse 6. It says, uh, seek ye the Lord. Uh, I'm starting verse, yeah, Isaiah 33 and verse 5. It says, the Lord Yahweh thy power is exalted. It says, the Lord Yahweh thy power is exalted. For he the well on high, he hath filled Zion, which is the Zion one, with judgment and righteousness. Uh, the prophet Isaiah 33 and verse 6. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation in the fear of the royal house of destruction. Right, so wisdom and knowledge that we should be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation in the fear of the royal house of destruction. Okay, let me get into that. Uh, I'll so lock you. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Amos. This is uh, the prophet Amos 3 and verse 1. It says, uh, hear this word that the Lord, Yahweh, thy power has spoken against you, O children of Israel, right, us Israelites, and against the whole families which I brought up from the land of Egypt, right, just like ancient Egypt, modern-day Egypt, Amos 3, verse 2, you only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. So we got to, it's important for us to return back to Yahweh, Shema, Shaft, like the highlight of the scripture of uh, Amos in the Blue Letter Bible, it says all the tribes are guilty, you know. So, hey, we got to return back to the heavenly father and choose his ways, the ways of righteousness. This is uh, Amos 3, verse 3. It says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Question mark. 
uh, Amos 3 and verse 4, it says, Look, will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? With a young lion cry out of his dead, he have taken nothing? Question mark. Amos 3 and verse 5, it says, uh, Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth? What it is no gem for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and having taken nothing at all? Question mark. Uh, the prophet Amos 80, uh, Salakia. Uh, the prophet Amos chapter 3 verse 6 it says shall they trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid question mark shall there be evil in the city and the Lord Yahweh thy power has not done it question mark the prophet Amos 3 verse 7 surely the Lord Yahweh thy power will do nothing but reveal it in his secrets unto his servants the prophets right the Israelites Amos 3 verse 8 the lion has war and the Lord Yahweh thy power has hope can't vote prophesy, right? You can't vote prophesy. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 12, and verse 1, the time of the end. This is uh, the prophet Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1, and it reads from the blue letter Bible of the Holy Scriptures, and it reads, it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which standeth, which standeth for the children of thy people, just like he did in ancient times, going to stand in modern times. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was there was a nation. Even to the same time, and at that time, that people shall be delivered, and everyone that shall be found written in the book, or willing that we be part of that be found written in the book. You know, uh, Daniel's 12 and verse 2 And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awaken some to everlasting life, some to shame, and some to everlasting contempt. Lord willing that we be part of the everlasting life. Uh, Daniel's 12 and verse 3 It says, And they shall be wise, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. It says, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Daniel 12, verse 4. For thou, O they shut the word and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Right, so many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And that's going to happen a lot increasingly in these modern day times and the signs of the times. And this is uh, the prophet Amos 8, verse 11. But this is going to be a modern, uh, modern day famine of words, just like it was in ancient times. But there's no new thing under the sun. This is uh, the prophet Amos 8, verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, how with thy power, that I will send a famine in a land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but the hearing of the words of the Lord, how with thy power. Right, so it's going to be a famine of word, famine of the land, just like it was in ancient times. Just like the prophet Amos times and the prophet's times. We're going to see that in modern day times. Okay, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 9, there's no new thing under the sun. So we're going to be persecuted. We're going to be hated for this truth, for lifting up the names of Yahweh Yahushua. But they're going to be thinking, oh, these guys in the cult, these guys are crazy. We're going to have to cancel them. We're going to have to lock them up. You know, we have to throw away the key. You know, all these type of things of what the prophets and what they went through. Hey, the prophets, they went through harsh, you know. But we're still going to get persecuted and hated for this uh, truth, you know, because it's going to be the famine of the word, you know. There's going to be a famine in the land just like it was in ancient times. There's going to be a famine in the land in these modern day times. And it's going to be the famine of the word. You know? This is uh, Amos 8 and verse 12. It says, uh, And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro and seek the words of the Lord and how thy power, and shall not find it. Um, this is other prophet Jeremiah 30. And Blue Letter Bible, it says, uh, Deliverance from Captivity Promise. This is uh, the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 1, from the KJV Bible of the Holy Bible of the Blue Letter Bible. It reads of Jeremiah 30, verse 1. It says, The word that came to Jeremiah, I heard for Father Jeremiah, for the Lord that have a guy, how saying, Jeremiah 30, verse 2. Thus speak the word. Thus speaketh the Lord Yahweh thy power of Israel, saying, It says, Write these all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Verse 3. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh thy power, I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord Yahweh thy power, and I will cause them to return to the land I give to their fathers, and they shall possess it. The prophet Joel 30, verse 4. And these are the words that the Lord Yahweh thy power speak concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Joel 3 and Joel 30 and verse 5, I meant to say Salaki. 
He says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh thy power. We have heard a voice of trembling and of fear and not of peace. Uh, verse 6 Ask ye now, see whether a man does travail with a child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his horns? And as a woman travail, and all the faces are turned into pillars. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. It says, At last for that day is great, so that none is like it. Even in the time, even in the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Like it's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble like never before, you know. So it's very important for us to seek the ways of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahshah, as this much, you know. And this is the book of Proverbs, Shah, the, the rewards, the re rewards of wisdom. And this is a Proverbs, the third chapter. From the Blue Letter Bible, KJV 1611 Bible, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures of Proverbs 3 verse 1. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. Write your heart, your mind. Uh, Proverbs 3 verse 2. It says, For the long, it says, For the length of days and long life and peace shall add to thee. So the more we trust in the ways of Yahweh Hashem Yahshah through his wisdom and eyes understanding, and the length of lay, the uh, length of days and long life shall, add, uh, shall be added to thee. In peace, you know. Uh, Proverbs 3 and verse 3. It says, Let not mercy and truth and safety uh, bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tables of thy heart. Write your heart your mind. Proverbs 3 and verse 4. It says, So shall they find favor and good understanding in the sight of Yahweh thy power and men. Proverbs 3 and verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord Yahweh thy power and all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Right, so trust in the ways of the Heavenly Father and lean not to thy own understanding. Especially the wisdom and our understanding of Yahweh Hashem Yahshah. I said, this much. Proverbs 3 and verse 6 In all thy ways acknowledge him. Right, so in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. So the more if we acknowledge the Heavenly Father and the more we choose his ways, then he shall direct our paths of the ways of righteousness, the ways of wisdom and our understanding. Right? Proverbs 3 and verse 7. Be not wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord Yahweh thy power, and depart from evil. Right, so be not wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord Yahweh thy power, and depart from evil. Verse 8, and it shall be health to thy neighbor, and marrow to thy bone. Verse 9, honor the Lord Yahweh thy power with substance, and with the first fruits in all thy increase. Verse 10, so shall thy bonds be filled with plenty, and the press shall burst out with new wine. Uh, verse 11, it says, My son, despise not the chastity of the Lord, your power by power, neither be worthy of his direction. Right, so, so we cannot despise the, the, the righteous, the righteous chastity of the Lord, your how much the heavenly father, your how much be not worthy of his direction. Uh, verse 12, it says, Whom the Lord, your how much loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son, whom he delighteth. This is uh, Proverbs 3 and verse 13, Salah. Wendy out here again as usual. Proverbs 3 and Salakia. Proverbs 3 and verse, right, Proverbs 3 and verse 13. It says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that get up understanding. Right, so happy is the man that get a uh, find of wisdom. Right, the righteous wisdom of the heavenly father, how well us his rights. And the man that get up understanding, right? Get a righteous understanding in the sight of uh, the heavenly body of how Joel, I mean, Proverbs 3 verse 14 for the merchandise of it better than merchandise of silver in the gain thereof than fine gold. Uh, Proverbs 3 and verse 15 she is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not compared unto her. Proverbs 3 verse 16 in the left of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Hey, shout out to that brother, uh, Yahweh, the prophet of the just between the twin. Proverbs 3, verse 17. Her ways are the ways of plentiness, and all her paths are peace. Verse 18. She is the tree of life to them that they hold on her. Happy is everyone that retaineth her. Proverbs 3, verse 19. It says, The Lord, Yahweh, thy power, by wisdom have he founded the earth, and by understanding have he established the heavens. Verse 20. It says, By his knowledge, Depths are broken up and the clouds are down too. So, continuing on, this is uh, Proverbs 3 and verse 20. It says, By his wisdom, and the depths are broken up and the clouds are dropped down by uh, the dew. So, I can, 
Proverbs 3, verse 21, it says, My son, let not them depart from thine eyes, and keep sound wisdom and discretion. Verse 22, So shall they be life unto thy soul, and grace to thy neck. Verse 23, Then shall thy walk in the way safely, and thou shalt not stop. Verse 24, it says, When thou layest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Proverbs 3, verse 25, it says, Be not it says, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked when it comes. Proverbs 3 and verse 26, For the Lord Yahweh thy power shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Verse 27, it says, Withhold not good from whom it is due, and when it is the power of thy hand to do it. Proverbs 3 and verse 28, it says, Say not unto thy neighbor, and go come again, and to thy marrow I will, I will give when thou hast it by thee. Proverbs 3 and verse 29, it says, Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he the well securely by thee. Uh, Proverbs 3 and verse 30, Scribe not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. Proverbs 3 and verse 31, Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. Right, so envy not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways, but choose the ways of the heavenly Father. That's this one, actually, the ways of all righteousness. Uh, Proverbs 3 and verse 33, The first of the Lord, your house thy power, is in the house of the wicked. But he blesses the habitations of the just. Uh, verse 34, Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3 and verse 34. Surely we scorn the scorners, but he have give grace unto the lowly. Proverbs 3 and verse 35. The wine shall be heavy glory, but shame shall be the portion of glory. Uh, okay, let's get into the uh, more scriptures. Habakkuk 2 and yeah. Habakkuk 2 and verse 3. For the vision is left in the morning time, but at the end it shall speak. Thou will tarry, wait for it, but it will surely come, and it will not tarry. Time. So the vision is set. You know? So I'll uh, continue on. Get some more scriptures out. To that second edge, as usual. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. and this is a uh, second edge, chapter 9 and verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure out the time diligently in the cell, when thou see the parts of the science pass, which I have told you before. All right, so we continue to measure the time diligently in the cell and continue to be on our watch as being the watchman unto the house of Israel. Sound the alarm, blowing the trumpet of these very important signs that we're seeing in our world today, and these are uh, prophecies that's about to be fulfilled. You know, so we continue to be on our watch and measure the time in the itself. You know? Verse two, it says, Second Edges, standing verse two, it says, Then thou shalt understand it is a very same time when the highest, which the uh, will begin to visit the world which he made. Second Edges, standing verse three, it says, Therefore, uh, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars in the people of the world. Right, these high magnitude of these uh, earthquakes in diverse places. Just like we, we've we been seeing the uh, increasing earthquakes over there in New Zealand, I believe that was a magnitude of a 6.1 to 6.3. And we've been seeing earthquakes over there in Afghanistan. You know, that was like a 5.1 or 5.7 magnitude of an earthquake. And then just like that recent earthquake, I believe it took place over there in uh, the Macaui, uh, the Macaui Islands. It was a 6.9. Then a week later, and that was a 6.1 magnitude earthquake. So that's just a prime example that we are seeing these uh, earthquakes in diverse places, and the uh, uproars of people in the world on top of that as well too, because these are increasing uh, biblical signs that we're seeing in our world today. This is uh, Second Edges 9 verse 3. It says, "Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes, uproars of people in the world." Uh, second Edges 9 verse 4 it says then thou shalt understand that the most high Yahweh thy power spake of these things from the days of before thee even from the beginning right so these are a very important signs that the heavenly father spoke on from the days of before thee even from the beginning and we are taking heed to that as we be in his service of prophets the mouthpiece and representation of the heavenly body Yahweh as us as well you know just like the prophets of old they took heed to this now we are taking heed to these in these uh, modern day times as well, too. You know? This is uh, Second Edges 9, verse 5. It says, For like all that is made in the world had a beginning and an end is manifested. 
right? So the beginning of the end, and the end is being manifested. We see that more clearly in these times, right? Second Edges 9 and verse 6, even so the times also the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and ending effects and signs. Uh, second Edges 9 and verse 7, and everyone that shall be saved shall be able to escape by his works and by faith what ye have believed. I don't want to that we can say be part of that. Uh, verse 8, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall be and shall see my salvation in my land within my borders for I have sanctified them from me from the beginning. Lord willing that we continue to be part of that, you know, out of our rock side. And you know, we continue to say that with meekness, humbleness, and sincerity in the sight of the heavenly body and out as, as us being in search of Christ. Second end is that verse 9. It says, Then shall they be in good case, which they have abused my ways, and they have cast them away to smite them, and shall dwell in torment. Verse 10. It says, because as in their life they have received benefits, they have not known them. Verse 11, and they have lowered my law, while they have let liberty in the place where which repentance was open unto them, and it said it not for despise. Verse 12, the same must know that after death by pain. Second Edges 9 verse 13, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whom the world is, from the whom the world is created. Second Edges 15 and verse 1 Speak thou in the ears of my people, for I this right. The words of prophecies which I put in thy mouth, saith the Lord Yahweh thy power. Second Edges 15 verse 2 And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Verse 3 Fear not the, uh, fear not the imagination against thee, that it says, let not, not, uh, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee, they speak against thee. Second Edges 15 verse 4, for all the young people shall be, i.e., in their unfaithfulness. Verse 5, it says, uh, Thus saith the Lord, yet I will thy power. I will uh, send plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Right, just like this uh, latest case that been taking place, this uh, measles, you know, 300 people have been uh, exposed to this uh, measles stuff. And then you had two adult migrants here in Chicago. You know, they've been... Uh, They've been exposed to this uh, measles hype outbreak stuff, you know, and these uh, migrant camps and stuff like that, you know, and then this chloria outbreak. So we seeing these uh, famines and pestilence. We seeing just like it was in ancient times. Now we see this in uh, modern times. This is uh, Second Edges 15 verse 3. It says, "Fear not the imagination against thee; let not the credulity of the trivial against thee." Against thee. Verse 4: For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Verse 5. Second Edges 15 verse 5, Behold, saith the Lord, you have thy power. I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. We're gonna see, we're gonna see a high increasing of these uh, famines, pests, and plagues. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. By the heaven father, I will leave the control of everything. Hey, he's Allah Shine, a terrible demon like power. Hey, it's a beautiful thing to fall in the hands of the true living power, which is the power of Israel. Second Edges 15 verse 6, for witness have received you to lose the whole earth, and the earth works are fulfilled. Verse 7, therefore saith the Lord, you have thy power. Verse 8, and I will hold my tongue no more after they touch that wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither I will suffer them in those things in which they ex wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and the righteous will cry out to me, and the souls of the just complain continuously. Second Edges 15 verse 19, therefore saith the Lord, you have thy power. I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Second Edges 15 verse 10, it says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter, and I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. For I just like ancient Egypt, this is our modern of Egypt. Second Edges 15 verse 11, it says, But I will bring them out with a mighty hand, and they stretch out arm. This my Egypt with plagues as before. Right, because this is uh, modern day Egypt, just like this, just like this, uh, it's modern day ancient Egypt with plagues. You're gonna see that in modern day times, this modern day Egypt. And I will smite Egypt with plagues as before, and I will destroy all the lands that were up. Right, so the heavenly father's gonna destroy all the lands that were up. He's gonna smite Egypt with plagues, it's modern day Egyp Egypt, gonna destroy the land that were up. Second Edges 15 and verse 12 Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten. Plagues and punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon you. Uh, verse 13, it says, They that tell the ground shall mourn for the sea and shall fail through the blasting and hell with the fearful constellation. Verse 14, 
woe to the world and them that dwell therein, right? Woe goes into uh, great discretion. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Second Edges 15, verse 15. For the sword, right? The modern sword's weapon, and that destruction draw nigh. And, uh, and one people should stand up and fight against another with swords and hands. Just like the ancient sword, the regular sword, and this modern day sword as well, too. And they show. It says, uh, if one people should stand up and fight against another with swords in their hands, not only we seeing that in North America, but we're seeing that around the world as well, too. Great divisions and great seditions. Uh, second Edges 15 and verse 16, but there shall be sedition among men, and they one another. They should not regard their kings, nor their princes, and of course, of their actions to stand in their power. So we definitely want to continue to see that increase more and more and more. Great seditions, uprises, uproars. Great division between people within their own race, within their own nation, within their own households, and outside of their nation as well, too. That's why we see that Deuteronomy 30, verse 7 is in full effect as we speak. It. You know, I just want to add that as a side note to that scripture. Second Edges 15, verse 17, it says, A man should decide to go into a city and should not be able to. Right? We're going to see that increasingly more and more and more. And we definitely see a previous signs of that, not just only here in North America, but around the world as well, too. Second Edges 15, verse 18. But because of their pride, why right, pride go before destruction? And that's in Proverbs 16, verse 18. It says, But because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, and the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Second Edges 15, verse 19. It says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but should destroy their houses with the sword, and spoil their goods because of the lack of great and great tribulation. Yeah. Hey, that movie, uh, American Refugee, that's a prime example. Leave the world behind. My example. The last, hey, the last of us. Prime example. That's why these uh, movies and TV shows they show them this is a, a prime example of what's about to occur in these uh, modern day times. As we see in that more and more and more, as we get through, we're about to get through these very important times. This is uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 19 verse 1 it says the burden it says the burden of Egypt behold the Lord your have thy power rider a swift, a swift plow and shall come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt shall be moved in his presence and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it just like that was in ancient Egypt that's going to take place in modern day Egypt as well too the scripture says there's no new thing under the sun. This is uh, the prophet Isaiah 19, verse 2. And I will let the Egyptian get the Egyptian. Why these modern day Egyptians? Just like ancient just like the ancient Egyptians. Now this modern day Egyptians. This is uh, the prophet Isaiah 19, verse 2. And I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian, and they shall fight everyone against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, uh, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. All right, so we're going to be seeing that in these uh, modern day times. The modern day Egyptian watching up against one another, everyone against his brother, everyone against his neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. So that's going to lead into great divisions and great seditions and great insurrection and uprisings. Now, so more than ever, you know. Now we get into that second Ezra 16 chapter. This is uh second Ezra 16 verse 1. It says, Oh, to be the the angel. What's up, brother? Oh, what's up, brother? Shalom. Oh, shalom, brother. Hey, shalom. How you doing? All right. Um it's good to see you out here. You got to a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. Representing you. Yeah. Prophesy. Got the trenches on. Yeah. It's a good thing, brother. Your, um, your good deeds should never go un, 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 unnamed or unwritten, you know what I'm saying? And I tell everybody, it's like, brother, that because you know one thing, who did Christ have in you? The disciples. Because, like, brother, 
Christ home with sinners. That's what we're going to do. Because today we got to get to get them to change, get them to repentance. You know what I'm saying? Christ ate and he drunk. Happiness and soberness, spirit and soberness. So when you do that, you do it with spirit and soberness. You don't do it to get sloppy like they're doing today. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where the sin come in. It's common sense stuff, man. The Bible is common sense. It's simple. For me, simple man to me. Guess what? It will. That's why I don't drink to get drunk. I drink to sober since we That's why I just got locked up for four years. They gave me 10 years. What did it say in the Bible? They said lock you away for what? 10 years. That's written, bro. So, I think um, everything possibly happens to our people, you know what I'm saying? Because we go through a lot by growing up in the slums of the neighborhood. Back then, Christ was in the slums because our people was in the slums at that time. You know what I'm saying? So, we go through the same things. History repeats itself. But we cannot forget what we went through. Nor what once I got to nothing, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, if we do, what will happen? It repeats itself. This is the end time. Over with time. My father, he ain't gonna allow us to fall in here. You see how they bring all these people over here? We built this country. Yeah. On our ancestors' backbones. That don't matter. Do what matter? The sacrifices. Yeah. What would you sacrifice for the most time? Sacrifice money. Life's supposed to be one. Because he laid down your life, his life for us. So why would you lay down your life for your friend? I will. Even if it's a sinner, I would lay down my life for him. You know what? Because that's one of our brothers. Because I know at the end of the day, I'm going to have eternal life. You know what I mean? I'm just saying this because I've been through this. And I just want you to know that I love you. What's your name? Uh, Andrew. My name's Shah Haya, Ben Judah, Israel. Oh, Y'all strong, brother. Well, my, uh, Hebrew, my Hebrew name is uh, The Walk. Who? The Walk. The Walk? Yeah, The Walk. What's that mean? Uh, T H, uh, yeah, T H A. What do you mean? W A. That means uh, exempt from judgment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mine is teacher, honorable teacher. So, um, for the most high, you know, I teach, man. You know, I love teaching. I love cook. I'm a cook. I love to cook. Right. That's what you know, Jacob. Yeah. Jacob was a cook. He made you sell your birthright. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob made Esau sell his birthright. So, we have to remember our past and remember what we're capable of doing in this world because we're the best cooks, we're the best everything right now. Anything we do, we're the best at it. I'm sorry to say it, man. That's why most I'm saying that we are jewels. You know what I mean? We got oil in us. And our oil burns. And that light can't can, can put it out. <laughs> as, much, you know as, much as, we, as much as as we have, uh, as much as the most state we are, but we still rise from that. That's why the scripture says, uh, Jacob, he's the form of all things. And the Lord is the right of his, of his inheritance. You see these towers? All these towers are going to fall real soon, bro. You know what I'm playing? No, I'm playing. Real soon. These towers going to fall, bro. This city going to fall. New York going to fall. All these cities going to fall. This country going to fall. You know why? Because they ain't doing us right. They know they did us. They want to forget about it. They want to erase the school. They want to do this, do that. We can't erase that. You know why? Because we tribal and our remembrance is going to be remembered through what? What we do. That's what we did in Africa. Because Africa, Israel is Africa. Israel in Africa. So you got, we got to think, what are we going to do? Yeah, Northeast Africa. Yeah. Because the most I got want kings, he want soldiers. He don't want no weakness. 
know what I'm saying? You want people that's going to be ready to ride. You know, this time is coming. That's why we think the most I am. Whoever he is. Go he show that face with that sky crack. Come on. It's going to be a hell of a record. It's going to be a trip. <laughs> I tell my girl, my girl, she's not an Israelite, she's a Christian. Oh, okay. But you cannot change them, you know that, right? Mm -hmm. You have to let them follow their own path. As long as they believe in the self you know what I'm saying? And most Israelites don't understand that. You have to, you can't force it on them. No, you have to win them over. You understand? Know the most I say, win them over. The what? And the word is good. So we have to win them over. Show them. Be kings. Work. Take care of the family, do things that the man's supposed to do. You know what I mean? So when we win them over, that's gonna be a beautiful thing. Because yeah. them people are gonna be the ones who going to the gates. A lot of us are already gonna turn straight. The Israelites gonna turn straight. Many women, strong liquor. He he said strong liquor not not bad, but when you abuse the strong liquor, and then because it changes your mindset. You know what I'm saying? For me, personally, I don't like strong liquor. I drink Hennessy like a Lush. Cognac. You know what I mean? But um, that's not what it's supposed to be. You know, we ain't never drink strong liquor until we can't to this country, man. Yeah. We should drink teas and stuff, man. You know what I mean? That's crazy, ain't it? Yeah, it is. That's why you got so much of. Uh, that's why you got so much money. Every corner, man, in the hood. Not downtown, in the hood. You go to Inglewood, you go to the south side, you go to the west side. They got liquor stores on every corner. So in my language. But damn, it's bad. And guess what? Now they got weed stores on every corner. Now it's weed is legal. Game is illegal. This is Simon Gomorrah. We know this. No, it's the sign of war. You know, we can't, all we have to do is be strong. Keep our faith in the most high. That's it. Yeah. That's why the scripture says. Pray uh, every day. That's why the scripture says that the spring that is within thee, she get her brother very high, and thou shalt come down very, very low. low. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you got to be. other nations. Yeah, the other That's nations. why the other nations come in here. What is happening to us right now? The same, same thing the scripture just called it is happening to us right now. Yeah. That's what's happening. Venus Wellness, bro. You see how deep they came? Bro, they are populated us in a minute. You know why? They try to kill us off. We kill each other. Yeah. They are populated us, bro. Real oh, they have, uh, it was one story, and I was looking on the news yesterday because I was checking through my YouTube feed. And uh, you had this uh, young 15 year old Judite chick. Um, she was pregnant, had a child. And next thing you know, come to find out, she was strangled. And dad, I'm like, wow. And we, we, when we, we uh, won't wake up and realize it before it be too late because we see what's taking place. You know, like you said, with the, uh, like, like you're seeing this. Like, Yo! Yeah, like you said, uh, like how these nations that's trying to, they trying to replace us, they come and flood in our communities and stuff like that. You know this. Now the Venezuelans, they got black blood. Right? Now check this out. They not only bring Venezuelans, they bring Ukrainians. Now look, you know the Bible says that Babylon should destroy itself. Yeah. The terrorists is already here. The terrorists, remember that? Sleeper cell, yeah. So why did God say terrorists? I never heard that before. Right. Terrorists? That's like Arabs. The Arabs be terrorists. Right. Supposedly. So the Arabs are not terrorists. Check that out. The Arabs come out of us. It's, the language is very close to Hebrew. Yeah. Very similar. It's a couple of things off. You know, it's like sloppy Hebrew. Yeah. But, um, no, I'm saying they ain't going to mess with us. They're going to mess with black people, bro. They love us. The Arabs. Now, I'm going to say we going to mess with us. White people, all the European countries, they're going to they try to come at us, man. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. They learn these different type of fighting skills, learn how to shoot these different type of weapons. You see on videos, they shooting all these big weapons and stuff. But God prepared us. You know what I'm saying? He prepared the younger generation. But the younger generation is the farther straight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got to 
prepare ourselves for the time of war because it is coming. And when it comes, it's going to be exactly what we think it's going to be. It's not going to be all of us. Have, no, he will want us ready. Man, that's why he's doing all this, because he wants us ready. He wants us to prepare for the time of war. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when time comes, he wants to be our master to be right. He wants to be pure at heart. Because if we ain't pure at heart, we might as well be dead. Yeah. Yeah. You say pure at heart. Yeah. Um, you got good heart, bro. I can see it right now. Yeah. So they say the eyes are the windows to your soul. So, I mean, a lot of people, it's an evil man to have, man. Yeah. But that's their heart. They, they was accustomed to growing up in the hood, and this is what they know. That's not good. Uh, what the scripture says, uh, Matthew 24, verse 12, and because the nicotine shall abound, the love of shall be told. Yeah. 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 That a lot. That's why you're saying, and it, it, it kind of blew my mind, because it was a report came out, uh, even though it's last year, because this is 2024, it was a report came out like, Urban suicide rates been up at an all time high. I'm like, wow, that's it's crazy. Well, well, you brother, don't think about it. The suicide, you ain't coming back from that. So, like, especially well, like when you dealing with like uh, relationships, and then it probably you doing like people like have mental disabilities or the family structure might be unstable. Now that's you know like, the mental thing. You know what that is, right? Yeah. The demons. Yeah. You have demons on there. That still exists. Demons is out here. It's like angels is out here. When they see spaceships, them are the angels. People don't want to believe it. Yeah, they got spacecraft now. Why? We don't know. By the way, we want spacecraft. They probably come to pick up people. We don't know. But we do know one thing that's the Lord's will. Yeah. So that's why I've been a lot of uh, that's why I've been a lot of classification about these uh, UFOs with UFO sightings. Now they're trying to talk about that's the most time, man. Then they trying to talk about uh, news article that just came out a couple of days ago. I had people that they was talking about if it's if it, if it's uh, potentially not UFOs or UFO sightings. Now they just brought out the classification. Now they trying to change their mind up on like, no, it's very good. That's the most high, bro. <laughs> Ain't no aliens. Yeah. No yeah. such thing as no aliens. If it was aliens, they have to travel decades, millions of years to get to us. That ain't gonna happen, bro. Yeah. God said He created the worlds. We mean worlds. You talking about? Different worlds, as far as people, as far as cities, countries. He wasn't talking about other world worlds. Ain't no life on other worlds, bro. Until we make it, and we have to make it to see that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. We get our spiritual bodies, then we could build other worlds. You understand? Know Come on, bro. I got to go. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Y'all, what you said that was? Uh, the Wa. The Wa. Yeah. The Wa. The Wa. T H A W A A. My name is Shia Hayes, but you call me Shia. Shylock. Yeah. Like Shy Low, but Shylock. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Have a good one, bro. All right. All right. Hey, beautiful. Hey, beautiful conversation with that Jake. Hey, Fadi Abash Mel Shah. That was a like man bro, you know. But I'm continuing on with the word. Hey, that's why it's hey, that's why it's important for us to come out here on the highways and hedges, you know. Like scripture says, you might be enchanted with uh with angels. That brother might have been an angel right there, you know. Hey, the body how about you now show you Hey you hey, a lot of times when you're coming out here teaching, hey, you might have some scoff from Israelites, but then you're gonna have some brothers that's in a good, solid, right frame of mind, right mindset of a like minded broke, you know. And make it out of I have mercy on that broke, you know. But, uh, so you know, this is uh, second edges 16 verse 2. I mean, verse 1, it says, Woe be unto Babylon in Asia, woe be unto the Egypt and Syria. Second edges 16 verse 2, it says, Gird up yourselves with cloth and in sack and pair, be well your children. Sorrow for your destruction is at hand. Second Edges 16, verse 3. A sword is set upon you, and who may turn it back? Right, we know the modern swords swords and weapons. Second Edges 16, verse 4. A fire is set upon you, and who may quench it? Second Edges 15, verse 5. It says, Plagues are sent unto you. What is he that may drive them away? 
uh, second Edna 16 verse 6. May any man drive them away from hunger in the lion in the wood, or may anyone quench the fire in the stubble when it has begun to burn. Verse 7. It says, May one turn again, but ever that shut out of their strong hearts. Uh, second Edna 16 verse 8. It says the mighty Lord that have a power. Windy out here today. <laughs> they call us the Windy City. This is uh, Second Edges 16 and verse 8. It says, The mighty Lord Yahweh thy power sent the plagues. And who is he that can drive it away? Right, the plagues of Yahweh Shemel Shaft. Who is he that can drive it away? Second Edges 16 and verse 8. The mighty Lord Yahweh thy power sent the plagues. And who is he that can drive them away? Verse 9, a fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? Verse 10, he shall pass lightning, and who shall not fear? And he shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? Verse 11, it says, The Lord Yahweh thy power shall threaten, and who is, it says, Who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? Second Edges 16, verse 12, the earth quickly, and the foundation thereof shall arise up. Up in the ways of the deep, and the ways of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord Yahweh thy power, and before the glory of his power. Uh, second Edges 16, verse 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, and it's the arrows that he shoot sharp, and are shooteth are sharp, and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Uh, verse 14. Behold, the plague of the it says, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. Uh, second Edges 16, verse 15. A fire is kindled and shall not be put out until it consume the foundations of the earth. Verse 16. It says, uh, Like as a arrow, which is shot out of a mighty archer, return of not happens. Even so, the plagues that are shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. Second Edges 16, verse 17. It says, Lord, who will me, me, who will put me in those days? Uh, second Edges 16, verse 18. And just like Ezra, you know, Ezra, he mentioned that. It says, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? You know? But we are living in the modern times, the modern day times of uh, Ezra, you know? Back again, once again, on the planet Earth. You know? uh, between known, second Edges 16, verse, that's why the scripture says, uh, Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 9. Uh, there's no new thing under the sun. Second Edges 16, verse 18. It says, The beginning of sorrows and great mourners. And the beginning of them is great death. The beginning of wars and the power should stand in fear. The beginning of evil. What shall I do when this evil shall come? Verse 19. It says, Behold, the, the famine and the plagues and tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for the memory. Verse 20. It says, For they. It says, for all these things that shall not return from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. Verse 21, and behold, the virtuous shall be so good cheap upon the earth, and they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even the evil shall grow upon the earth, and the sword, famine, and great confusion. Salakia. William Blunt. So you know the reason this is uh second head sixteen verse twenty one. It says be Behold, virtuous shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they think themselves to be in good case. And even shall evil grows upon the earth with sword, famine, and great confusion. Second Edges 16, verse 22. It says, For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish from men, and the others shall escape the hunger, and shall destroy and shall the sword destroy. Verse 23, it says, And they shall be cast out as a dove. There shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be waste, and the city shall be cast down. Uh, verse 24, it says, and There shall be no man left to tip the earth and to sow it. Uh, verse 25, the 
tree shall give fruit, and who shall gather them? Verse 26, it says, The grapes shall reap them, and who shall tread them? And from all the places shall the desolate of men. Uh, verse 27, So that no man shall desire to see another, and to hear his voice. Verse 28, But of a city there shall be ten left, and two of the field, which shall hid themselves in the thick groves and the clefts of the rocks. Verse 29, it says, as, as in a archer and a palace upon every tree, there are left three or four olives. Uh, second Edges 16 and verse 30, it says, Or as even, it says, Or as when the vineyard is gathered, there are uh, left some buckets, and of them that did not seek to the vineyard. Second Edges 16 verse 31, it says, Even so, those days there should be three or four left by them. That search of their houses with the sword, like the mind of swords of women. Verse 32, it says, The earth shall be laid waste, and the fields thereof shall wax old, and her base, and all her paths shall uh, grow full of thorns, because no man shall travel there through. Verse 33, The virgin shall mourn in having no bridegroom, and the woman shall mourn in having no husband, and their daughters shall mourn in having no helpers. Verse 34, it says, in the war shall the right ones be destroyed, and their husbands shall perish from famine. Verse 35, it says, hear now these things, and understand them, ye servants of the Lord, and have a black power. Second Edges 16, verse 36, it says, behold, the word of the Lord, you have a black power. Of the it says, believe not the God of them, the Lord, you have a black power. Spake. Verse 37, it says, Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. Right, so the, the plagues of the Heavenly Father are draw nigh and are not slack. This was in ancient times, now we see that in modern times. Uh, verse 38, it says, And when a woman with a child in the ninth month bring it forth her son, and with two or three hours of her great, great pain, and the pastor of bones was playing when the child cometh forth, and they are not slack any longer. Uh, verse 39, even so shall not the plagues be slack come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and the, the sorrows shall come upon it on every side. Verse 40, 2nd Edge 16, verse 40, it says, O oh, my people, hear my word, and make me ready to die battle. Right, and that was the spirit, because uh, the Jake, he just mentioned that. He said, uh, you know, the Israelites, they got to be prepared for battle once these times approach us, you know. And that was the spirit that brother he just mentioned that, you know, okay, why do you have a chapter? It's uh, second edges uh, 16 and verse 4. It says, Oh my people, write the Israelites, hear my word and make you ready to die battle, right mentally and spiritually. And those evils be even as a pilgrim upon the earth. Right, so it's gonna it's gonna get so bad out here, and we're gonna have to be pilgrims upon the earth. You know? Verse 41, it says, He that selleth, let him be as they flee away, and he that buyeth as one they will lose. Verse 42, and he that occupies merchandise, as he has no profit by it, and he that biddeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. Verse 43, it says, and He that soweth, as he shall uh, not reap, so also he that planteth the vineyard, as he that shall not gather the grapes. Verse 44, then they marry as they shall get no children, and they marry not as widows. Verse 45, and therefore they that labor, labor in vain. Verse 46, for strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods and overthrow their houses and take their children's captives for in captivity, and the famine shall gather to get their children. All right, these are the times that's about to take place, you know. Verse 47, and they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their seats and their houses and their possessions and their own persons. Verse 48, the more I will be angry with them for their sins, saith the Lord Yahweh. Verse 49, like as a poor Indian, a righteous, a right, honest, and virtuous one, I meant to say spot. Verse 50, 2nd Edges 16, verse 50, so shall righteousness hate her iniquity when she deck herself and she accuse her to her face. When he cometh, there should defend him that search of out all even sin upon earth. Verse 51. And therefore be ye not like thereunto, nor the works thereof. Uh, verse 52. For yet a little while iniquity shall be taken out of the earth, 
and righteousness shall reign among you. Verse 53, let not the sinner say that he have not sinned, for Yahweh shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which said the Lord Yahweh thy power, and his glory I have not sinned. Uh, verse 54, behold, the Lord Yahweh thy power knoweth all the works of men, and their imagination, and their thoughts, and their hearts. Verse 55, it says, which spake it out of the word, let the earth be made, and it was made, let the heavens be made, and it was created. Second Edges 16 verse 56. And his word, which were the stars made, and he knoweth the numbers of them. Verse 57. He searched out the deep and the treasure thereof. He has made uh, measure the sea and what it contained. Verse 58. And he has shut the sea in the midst of the waters. And with his word have he hanged the earth upon the waters. Uh, verse 59. He spread it out the heavens like a vault. And upon the waters have he found it. Uh, second Edges 16 verse 16. It says, In the desert shall he made the springs of waters and pulled upon the tops of the mountains, that the floods might pour down from the highest rocks and to water the earth. Verse 61. And he made men and put his heart in the midst of the body, and he gave him breath life and extent. Verse 62. Yea, and the spirit of Almighty Yahweh God, which made of all things, and searched out all the hidden things and the secrets of the earth. Second Matthew 16, verse 63. It says, Surely he knoweth your inventions, and what he think in your heart which your mind, even them that sin and what hid their sin. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, I'm, I'm continuing working on my uh <laughs> My flaws of me sin as well too. I, I admit that, you know, as I continue to turn away from even this weakness, you know, I do a lot of stuff. But uh second chapter 16 verse 64, it says, Therefore have the Lord Yahweh thy power, exactly search out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. Verse 65, and when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men, and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Second chapter 16 verse 66. It says, what ye do, or how will ye hid your sins before Yahweh and his angels? Second Edge 16, verse 67. It says, Behold, Yahweh himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall Yahweh be to forth and deliver you from all trouble. Verse 68. It says, For Yahweh, it says, For behold, in the front of the wrath and the great multitude is him over you. The day that shall take away certain of you, the beast will be added, and then things offer unto our people. Uh, verse 61. And they that were sent unto them shall be had in the bridge, and reproached and trod on the foot. Uh, verse 70. But there shall be in the next, it says, For there shall be in every place in the next cities a great insurrection, which is an uprising upon those that fear the Lord the house. Verse 71. And they that should be like madmen spare none, but spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord the house. Verse 72. And that they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Verse 73. It says, They that shall be known who are my chosen, and who shall be tried as gold and fire. So I don't want to rock side that would be part of that remnant of the 144. They're going to be tried as the mode of fire as we, you know, as we're entering into the time of Jacob's struggle, as we're entering into the time of great tribulation, as we're entering into the time of insurrection, as we're entering into the time of uh, the hour of temptation, of the fully revealing of this MOTB, you know. So in Armageddon, our Armageddon, Armageddon, World War Three, and these are the times that we're about to enter into. So I don't want to prophesy that we be part of the chosen from the heavenly father in your house. As the team to be in his service and prophets, you know, including the uh, elders, well, I can, I don't want to rock that would be part of that, you know, of that remnant of 144, men, women, children, I don't want to rock So I'm going to read again, 2nd Edges 16, verse 73. It says, Then shall be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the golden of God. Verse 74, it says, Hear, O ye my beloved, says the Lord, the house of thy house. Behold, the days are troubled, are at hand, for I will deliver you from the same. I just want to rock the side that we've been, that we the ones that be saved, you know, be of that hopeful left, that remnant, you know. This is uh, 2nd Edges 16, verse 75. It says, Be, be not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh is your God. 
second Edges 16 verse 76. And the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord, you have without power. Let not your sins weigh you down. Let not your iniquities lift up yourselves. Right, so let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up yourselves, you know. Because you know this is an everyday spiritual warfare, a spiritual battle, you know, on an everyday basis. Second Edges 16, verse 77. It says, Woe be unto them that are bound with sin and covered with their iniquities, like as the field is covered over the bushes, and the path thereof covered with the thorns that no man may travel through. Second Edges 16, verse 78. It is left undressed and is casted into the fire to be consumed thereof. And this is the book of Damn, stuttering, stuttering like a motherfucker. Focus as hell. <laughs> Uh, so I'm here. Uh, Baruch, I have the verse 1. It says, Put off old Jerusalem, the garment of mourning and affliction, and put on the comeliness of the glory that cometh from your hour for heaven. Uh, Baruch, I have verse 2. Cast about thee the double garment of the righteousness which cometh from your hour, and set up the di uh, diadem of the head of thy glory of the everlasting. Uh, Baruch, 5 and verse uh, 3. For your hour will shew thy brightness unto every country and unto heaven. Uh, verse 4, for thy name should be called of your hour forever in the peace of righteousness and the glory of your house worship. The Luke 5, verse 5, arise, O Jerusalem, and stand on high, and look about towards the east, and behold thy children, gathered from the west and unto the east by the Holy One rejoicing in the remembrance of your house. The Luke 5, verse 6, for they depart from thee on foot, and will lay away of their enemies. But you have a friend amongst them in the exalt of the glory of the kingdom. Group 5 verse 7. For your power has appointed that every ideal and banks and multitudes shall be cast down in the valleys uh, filled up to make even the God of Israel make us sick. I mean, uh, uh, Israel make us sick. The glory of the power. Uh, the group 5 verse 8. This is the most important even in the world. The tree and the shadow of Israel by the man of Yahweh. Group 5 verse 8. It says, For, for Yahweh shall let Israel with the joy and the light of his uh, glory with the mercies and righteousness that come from him. Uh, get into that Ecclesiasticus. Get a few more scriptures that I'm closed out. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus 12 verse 1. It says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come now, nor the years shall not, and thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Right, so it's very important to uh, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. And Isaiah 55, verse 6, uh, Seek ye the Lord, Yahweh, while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. And this is uh, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. It says, Let us hear, uh, let us hear the conclusion of the whole map. Uh, fear Yahweh and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Why fear your hour to keep his commandments? Because this is the whole duty of man, you know. And you ask us, what, verse 14, for your hour shall bring heavy work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Uh, this is uh, the prophet Isaiah uh, 11 and verse 10. It says, In that day shall be a work of Jesse, which standeth above the inside of the people, and it shall be the Gentile seat, and the breast shall be glorious. The prophet Isaiah 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord Yahweh thy power shall set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people. Out of our rocks, out that will be part of that remnant, which shall be a left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Paphos, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shadar, and from Amon, and from the eyes of the sea. And this is the area where the Israelites are still scattered at to this day. The Heavenly Father is going to come back a second time to recover the remnant of his people. This is uh, Isaiah 11, verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Isaiah 11, verse 13. The envy also of people shall depart of the Lord of King, and the adversaries of the Judah, the southern king of the top tribe, shall be cut off. It says, uh, right, the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. I meant to say, Salak in my box. It says, Ephraim shall not envy Judah. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Right, so the northern kingdom of the uh, the northern kingdom of the Ephraimites, brothers and sisters, and the southern kingdom of the brothers and sisters, and they're not gonna envy and vex one another no more. They're gonna come back together as that nice 
Isaiah 11 verse 14. It says, but they shall fly upon the shovels of the Philistines towards the west. Uh, they shall spoil them of the east together, and they shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Hamish shall obey them. Uh, the prophet Isaiah 11 verse 15, the Lord your have thy power shall utterly, shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wing shall he uh, shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it even the seven springs, and make men go over dry shore. The prophet Isaiah 11 verse 16, it says, there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, right, the Israelites, which shall be a left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came out of the land of Egypt. So with that, I'm going to uh, close out this uh, live lesson, live camp lesson through the spirit of God, grace and mercy of Yahweh Yahweh And uh, in the water, Yahweh Shem Yahweh for letting me come out here again on the highways and hedges, uh, downtown Chicago, on this uh, March the 12th. Uh, 2024 on this Tuesday afternoon at 2.51 p.m. In the heavenly Father, true name is Ezekiel and his only begotten son, Ba'ashem, in the name of Mashiach, Yavashah. Those are their true names in the ancient Hebrew, the Hebrew, the Mashiach, the Hotel, and much love and respect to the uh, elders by Haki and Mahakra. And with that, I would like to give all praises and glory and honor to to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yavashah, Ba'ashem, Akakadash, Shalom to the, uh, so good. Shalom. Shout out to the uh, elders while I get my aqua. Until next time, I will say shout out to the elders. Listen, what you said. No, keep going. Keep I was just playing what you playing. What you playing? I was listening to uh, what you were saying. I was listening. No, I just, uh, this close down. I just finished just now. Wow. Yeah, I just got Can you restart it? I'm no, he can't restart it. I'm willing to listen. I'm going to listen. I've been out here already for like three hours. So. What you out here for? What you recording? <laughs> I was out here teaching. Oh, Teach us up. Oh, that shows you that we are the, uh, the children of Israel. As well, tribes of Israel, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. So I'm just out here teaching that we are the Israelites. We're coming back into our nationality, and our culture, and our customs, and all we actually are. And you, the daughters of Zion, you know, the father's chosen people. What your father is? He said, uh, Puerto Rican and black. Puerto Rican and black's black. mayor. Oh, he, he potentially might be an Israelite. Okay, okay. Yeah, because uh, uh, it goes to the, uh, the seed of your father. Just like it says in Numbers, hey, Numbers 1 and 18. Because, like, you, you're the seed of your father, just like your, your father's father's and his father's father's. No, he, he's teaching going, to me right now. You gotta play yeah, on. so, yeah, this is what we are, I was just out here teaching about, telling we are the Israelites and telling what's the signs that's taking place in the world today, you know, because they're pushing this uh, this uh, technology, uh, this uh, chip. Because very soon, the uh, paper dollars is going to be a thing of the past, and that's why they're pushing this uh, technology called the, uh, this Karaka. Because you've you seen... Uh, that just came out? It's coming very soon. It's already here. They're just going to make it mandatory very soon. Because very soon, the paper dollar is going to uh, crash. And then they're going to have, you know, that new, uh, Elon Musk, he just really, re just, re uh, just released that yeah. neural link stuff. Yeah. Because like they're going to look at that as a positive sound. Like, you could be able to, like, move things. Does that, oh, you do that Elon Musk Ethereum shit? Um, I mean, they, they kind of look at that as a, as a positive note. But they give them free money. I'd say. I took that 10K and ran off of it. 10K, me 10K, I ran off of it. But, uh, I'm sorry, I'll give you the code right now. I know. Good, you can make. He good. Shut the no, fuck up. GG. But yeah, that's, Watch that's, basically, that's what basically I'm just. Uh, oh, what you doing? Stuff like that. Yeah. Made me look like a bad person right now, baby mama. <laughs> All right, y'all. Tell my baby you. mama to chill out with me. That's my baby mama right here. The video right? was so nice. Thank she you guys. Is, is she he was teaching us some real shit. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Make sure to subscribe to him, follow him, yes. and make subscribe. sure to get locked in. He'll teach y'all some shit. Yes. Thanks. Yes. Stay positive, bro. I appreciate you for that. Thank you, Shake. Thank you. Right, right, see y'all next time, too. Y'all How you gonna call her a sister but me not a brother? Get your ass off. I'm not a brother? Yeah, you no, a brother. I'm about to say. He just talking <laughs> shit. Come on, fucking brother, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you. All right, y'all take care. <laughs>